diffs on the start line. So um, yeah, what's the common problem that that leads, leads from? Most of it is um, over horsepowering and hard launches on diffs. That's what kills them. Once you start putting horsepower and big motors in cars, then you've got to up the rest of the drivetrain, and it's not just a gearbox and a clutch that you've got to up. You've got to up your drive shaft and your diff. And that's why Toyota Hilux diffs are one of the car, uh, diffs that get chopped up for most cars that have high revving engines. And then the only other choice you've got once you step out of this is into a 9-inch Ford diff. And then that is the benchmark for just about anything. And yeah, what sort of advice can we offer for fellow viewers out there in regards to maintenance for their diffs? They, it's really just the same maintenance you would do to your uh, gearbox, your engine, anything. You know, the most important thing is giving them regular oil changes for a start. Well, thanks for that, Lee. You've done an awesome job on this diff here. And uh, I think we should, yeah, we'll get a move on and go about this into this 3D3. Yep, not a problem. It's all yours to take away. Well, all the bits for the 3D3 are coming together quite nicely. Join us next week for more BK Car Build. Welcome back to the BK Car Build. We skate over to NoCamps Motorsport where Brendan and the team are getting together to begin reassembling the skid wagon. Ah! <laughs> right, as you can see here, we've got the car up on the hoist there. We've got the diff suspension part sitting there on the ground and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get it back in the car. And with that, the rear leaf springs, professionally lowered and freshened up by Autoline, get bolted up with new Nolifane bushes as well. Right, I mean the boys are going to muscle it up and uh, lift this Hilux stuff um, into the car. Hopefully we don't put our backs out doing it. With the diff located, the U-bolts go over. U-bolts nice. Onto the front end, the steering gear, a combo of new and freshened parts get bolted up. What I'm doing here is I'm just applying some grease to wherever the nolophane bush touches the steel. And why I do that is because unlike um, conventional rubber bushes that have the center sleeve vulcanized to them, what we've got here is the nolithane bush, like uh, Autoline placed in here. Um, it actually turns this unit into more of a bearing, and that's why we're using the grease to, uh, to make sure everything is nice and smooth uh, when it goes to pivot. Now, that'll give us um, tighter suspension, more control and feel up at the steering wheel, and uh, less play. OK, here's our front strut out of our Series 1 RX-7. Uh, Autoline have put some Dobie coils with it and um, overhauled the shock absorber. I think they put a, what, a Monroe, Monroe gas shock in there. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how that works out. I like them tight. What we're doing here is we're just going to pop the steering arm onto the lower ball joint. Um, that in turn bolts to the bottom of the strut and uh, basically makes the uh, struts and the steering all as one. Meanwhile, Brendan was busy fingering bushes for the sway bar that is. Slippery when wet. <laughs> okay, here we have the RX3 replica cross member, uh, courtesy of No Cams Motorsport, of course. And uh, yeah, we're fitting it to the car and that'll get the 13B sitting nicely into the, into the car. Eventually, the sway bar will be bolted to the RX3 cross member to which the rotor will be mounted to. All right, what we've got here is the idler arm. And what this unit here does is um, hold the centre steering link up. Like that, like that. And that makes uh, the steering make sense going that way. So uh, we'll connect these into here. With the steering pretty much sorted, it was time to take a look at the clutch. Uh, this is a clutch master cylinder, and I'm just modifying it slightly because it's uh, designed to fit an RX-7. However, uh, this is going in 3D3. 
Yeah, we're just going to enlarge the holes so it will fit over the studs in the 3D3 and uh, we'll just bolt it up. With the suspension and steering hooked up, and rear end not far behind, I left the boys to their vices to suss out the next part we needed. To keep the rotisserie engine and the 323 from cooking itself, we're here at Real Deal Radiators in the wild, wild west of Auckland to talk about radiators and how to keep this bad boy cool. Let's go check it out. And it was Dave from Real Deal that fabricated the radiator for Double Whopper from last season. All right, then uh, why don't you take us over to the workbench and see how the core for our 3D3 is going to work, eh? Yep. Let's hit it. This is the alloy core for the 323. It's an yep. 85 mil thick uh, KJ core, and it's fully aluminium. Now, uh, obviously, this is not quite a, not quite the finished product, but so um, what other things need to happen to this radiator to make it finished? Uh, we just fabricate the tanks, and then they get welded on. Well, why don't you show us um, how those uh, how those things get put together? Yep. We start off with a two mil aluminium sheet, it's marine grade. And then that gets folded into a channel. The right size for the header plate. Yeah. And then what next? Yep. Uh, then we just roll up the ends there and sand them up and we polish it. And so once the once the tanks are on there, is that it? Or are there more bits to go there on there? Uh, just the tanks, pipes, brackets and fillers and all the little fittings here. Well, ours are certainly on its way. If you need a custom radiator for your ride, check out rdradiators.co.nz. Well, this is it. The 323 is heading towards the finish line faster than Willie White. Oh, well, maybe not as fast as that, but we're getting there. The calipers, gonna re-kit them, put new seals, new pistons, everything in there, so it'll be nice and fresh. Brendan going to 100 miles an hour gets the front hubs and disc rotors assembled and put into the front end. They look pretty sweet and like magic the rebuilt calipers are installed, followed by the chrome modgies which enables the car now to be a rolling body. Alright, here we have the uh, brand new tail lights. Um, yeah, thanks Maz New Zealand. Uh, yeah. With the 323 rolling, it was pushed up the road to Stu's trim shop to have the interior placed in. And while it was there, they threw in a new hood lining and hooked up some carpet. We've just got the car back from Stu's trim shop. All the carpet's gone in. Yeah, pretty much all the dash cover's gone back on. And uh, now we'll get into it and uh, put some interior back into it. So uh, we'll get to it. Fitted the uh, Speedo there and uh, got that sitting in place. We're still waiting for a steering bush, which will turn up tomorrow. Uh, we'll get the indicator stalk and that on a little bit later. But uh, for now, to make this car mobile, we'll uh, give it a steering wheel. Now for the Corsa Buckies, as supplied by Brendan himself. Of course, you've got to test them and make sure that they're comfy. Right, now for the back seat. Chop chop, come on, let's go. Right, now for the rear carpet. The interior is coming together quite nicely. Right, we've got a few new parts and a few chrome parts uh, chucked back into the engine bay. Right, we've got the bonnet stay here, we've got the new chrome hinges, and we've got the uh, bonnet release which is also chromed. Now we've got the engine mounts, just loosely sit them in there for now. Now that we're finished in the engine bay there, we'll uh, move on to getting the car up in the air and we'll get the new fuel lines, new brake lines, fuel pump, the B&M line lock kit, and we'll be away. We've got the rear end in now. Uh, we've got we've put a two-inch line block in there just to get a little bit higher. Uh, we've got all the U-bolts tightened up. These will need to be chopped off shorter uh, once we've definitely know exactly where the rear end is going to sit. We've got these rear shocks, um, custom made by Autoline. Um, they're five-way adjustable damper, which will harden it right up for burnouts just to just to harden the rear end so it doesn't doesn't try and grip and just take off. 
this is the uh, b and line lock kit, which is fitted in, in T uh, with the rear brake lines. Um, this will enable us to, at a flick of a switch on the dashboard, uh, basically lock off the rear brake lines, um, just to enable, the, when the car's doing burnouts, the back brakes will not operate at all. Here we've got the car to fuel pump, uh, ideal for naturally aspirated rotaries. Um, personally myself, I find them a lot more reliable than a Holly and a lot quieter. There's the fuel pump sitting there. We've got the outlet, uh, which will run off to out the front up to the car, and you know, once the petrol tank's back in, that will run up through a fuel filter and into the petrol tank. We've got the fuel line sitting in there now, uh, a little bit excess in length there. Uh, we'll trim this off about here, and we'll put a piece of rubber hose, uh, which will loop between there and the fuel pump. Working well into the night, Brendan also installed a shiny, gritty oil catch can, put the finishing touches on the brake lines, chucked in a dummy motor, laid out all the wiring and installed some trick ready gauges including water and oil temp and oil pressure. From there the 3D3 was sent over to Ben Spray Painting to have the doors, boot lid and front guards painted which had to be sourced from another car as the original ones were too rusty to fix. Once all the panels were on, Kirk, owner of Ben Spray Painting, masked up the car for the teal colour as per the Mag and Turbo colour scheme. Meanwhile back over at No Cams, Brendan is getting the engine put together and with a big list of things to finish, we need to get things cracking. By now you guys will be aware of what we're doing uh, with the 3D3 and we're going to chuck a rotary in it. The engine we have here for the 3D3 car build is a Mazda RX-7 13B twin turboed automatic engine. Uh, there's obviously going to be a lot of changes to this engine as we're going to run it as a 13B peripheral port. We'll get into a brief rundown on some of the changes that we are going to have to make to this engine to make it pulse. Starting from the front of the engine here, uh, the original Series 7 engine is uh, side mounted. Uh, obviously for the 3D3 we're going to need to front mount it as it is an older style uh, mounting situation. So by getting rid of this and replacing it with an earlier 12A front cover it's got the mounting holes situated there on the housing so we can mount the engine with an RX3 cross member. Moving along to the side plates here, we will be filling these ports in with a liquid metal to block these ports off as we're running peripheral port which comes in from the housing. Here we have the 30B rotor housing. We will be machining a hole directly into the housing. There'll be an aluminium sleeve pressed in there which will carry on to be ported through to the intake of the housing. Fr from there, we will then uh, port the exhaust port to uh, match the intake uh, so we can get the flow nice and nice and even. All right, moving on to the rotor here. The difference between these rotors here, this one being turboed, this one being naturally aspirated, the compression chamber on the turbo rotor is a lot deeper. Uh, deeper compression chamber equals less compression. The more shallow the chamber, the more compression. Uh, for this particular engine, we want more compression, so we'll be going with this rotor here. Moving on to the sumps here, we've got the 30 mm Turbo Series 7 RX-7 sump. We've got the we've got an early RX-7 sump here. Uh, difference, two differences in the sump. Uh, RX-7 has got a different cross member, uh, therefore moves back further. For the 3D3, we need to accommodate for the cross member there. Moving on to the gearbox here, we've got a Mazda RX-7 Series 4 gearbox, uh, which has been fully rebuilt. A lot stronger than a Series 1, 2 or 3 gearbox and quite readily available. Um, originally running on the 30mm turbo engine, um, it'll sit quite nicely behind the peripheral port and handle with power. Coming up after the break, the final bits go on and we see the finished product! Come on Brendan, we've got to get the radiator and the oil cooler in. And Kirk's got to get the green teal put on the car as well. Oh, there it is. And fit those doors and all the other panels. Oh jeez, it looks quite nice, doesn't it? And of course the glass guy's got to put the windows in. Or else you'll be having breezes flowing through. That can't be good. Oh, of course the Weber carburetor. And Brendan, get those headlights in, mate. And that grill. You can do it, fella. No time for lying down there, Brendan. I don't want to hear any stories. My story, my sad, my sad sob story uh -huh. about not having sleep for the last two days for this damn car.